that conversation now with our panel, R.S. Sharma, former CMD ONGC, is joining us on, on the show. I'm speaking with Upasna Bhardwaj, senior economist at Kotak Mahindra Bank, Madhvi Arora, lead economist, MK Global, and Mayank Shah, senior category head, Parley Products, is also with us on the show. Uh, welcome to all of you, and thank you for speaking with us. Upasna, let me begin with your take. I asked that question earlier as well. How much of impact, how much of relief are you uh, in that section of people, of economy? who believes uh, 20 to 40 basis points is the extent of relief we probably see? I think you're on mute, ma'am. Uh, yeah, so my inflation projections have been revised down by 24 basis after the recent announcements that have happened. But uh, I'd just like to highlight a couple of points here. Uh, uh, one, on the fuel costs, of course, the fuel prices have come down. There is also announcement on, uh, or rather cushioning the fertilizer price and hence the uh, probable impact that the farmers would have had on the uh, input prices. That too has been cushioned to an extent. On the LPG side, we have a subsidy. So all of that is clearly providing a downside pressure to prices in the near term for sure. But for the fuel price specifically, the nuances are such that we know that the OMCs do have under recoveries. Estimates are anywhere between 10 rupees to uh, probably 15 rupees, that's what appears to be the case, which means at some point in time, we would be seeing uh, higher prices, higher pump prices. Uh, it may be delayed, but I don't expect that to really continue unless we really see crude oil prices crashing down. So somewhere, while right now, yes, there is downside pressure, we'll have to be watchful on the crude oil trajectory. Uh, let me come to Madhvi on uh, that same point. Uh, what is your assessment of the impact uh, on, um, you know, inflation as a whole? Are your inflation projections changing? And do you also think there's scope for more relief on excise duties? Uh, so I agree with Upasna that, you know, you need to watch out for the behavior of OMCs. Uh, uh, as for my estimate, the net direct uh, and plus indirect impact of, uh, you know, the current policy move should be uh, to the tune of 40 bips plus. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the second order impact which could come on the back of, uh, you know, uh, other uh, key input uh, well, intermediaries that the government has sort of given uh, relief on. But again, uh, one needs to watch out for the behavior of OMCs because as she rightly mentioned, uh, you know, they are sitting with a very, very high under recoveries of around 12 rupees for uh, diesel and I think 14 rupees, 15 rupees for petrol. And they may want to recover their margins later, especially if the global prices stabilize. At the same time, they're also, uh, you know, sitting with off budget under recoveries of around 200 plus uh, per cylinder uh, on the LP LPG base. So that also needs to be, uh, you know, seen in that context because OMCs are heavily losing on that front and they may need to take price hack immediately unless, of course, the international LPG prices drop. Um, uh, there are some chances due to, uh, you know, seasonality it may happen, but uh, on net at this point, oil remains elevated and thus we need to see, you know, whether, uh, you know, these uh, companies actually tend to pass on the full price uh, uh, impact in the medium term. In the immediate run, of course, uh, the policy direction looks to be pretty uh, uh, firm that, uh, you know, uh, there has, there is sort of a combined effort both from the fiscal and monetary sense to contain inflation and probably bring it down to a more uh, reasonable range, uh, say around six, six and a half. At this point in time, uh, you know, inflation looks to be pretty ominous. I think the next print for the month of uh, May could actually be close to around 6.8%. And okay. uh, the next two quarters still look to be 6% plus. So clearly RBI is sitting with a huge task of, uh, you know, uh, containing inflation as its uh, policy target. So I think the pressure is now off to the government and Again, OMCs are bearing a brunt of that to some extent. So, you know, uh, both of you all have raised the point of whether the OMCs will pass on further hikes or not. Mr. Aris Sharma, do you think they will? Because we've discussed this in the past. The OMCs are supposed to do this transparently because that's our policy. But uh, there's a pause on rate hikes uh, depending on whether we're in election season or not. Considering that inflation is really beginning to hurt, has become a huge political issue as well. Uh, can we safely assume that OMCs will sit tight, at least for now? Uh, Tamana, you have used the word transparently, so immediately a smile came on my, my face. Where is the transparency? Do you think there's a transparency? I also uh, said supposed to. I, I also said right? supposed to, sir. No, no, just, I'm just uh, a statement from Reliance BP. 
yeah. that they are they are uh, suffering under recoveries of 13 rupees on uh, diesel and uh, no no 13 rupees on petrol and uh, uh, perhaps 24 rupees on diesel this is i am not able to digest these numbers first of all could be some uh, uh, you know exaggeration there but shortly these all marketing companies are uh, suffering huge under recoveries and you know these decisions are uh, done at the behest of the owner you know who's the owner the uh, so the way owner uh, directs the way owner uh, says or you may call it the backseat driving or uh, uh, directions in the national interest whatever you may call it but unfortunately there's no transparency and personally let me be honest to say in a this is a very abnormal situation uh, there is need not be, uh, you know, keep, keep the things uh, uh, the, the close. Uh, let it be known to the stakeholders and uh, let it be known that it is a very abnormal situation. There is no way that uh, the entire burden can, can be passed on to the consumer. But look at it. All these marketing companies, they have uh, made uh, huge profits. So it's not because the refinery margins are very high. International price is the price difference between uh, the crude and the products is quite high. Still, they are making good profits. Only thing is, let it be known. It cannot be remain camouflage. At least I have been in the industry, industry so long. I find difficult to take it that it is being done transparently. So let me come to the question that I started the show with. Is there scope for more? Is there scope for more than this 8 and 6 rupee cut on excise? Can states do more? That was an interesting um, sort of analysis by the former CEA uh, on top of the show, if some of you all heard it, who is arguing that all of the cuts that have been announced by states on VAT is just a process of the cascading impact of the tax. They've not really cut anything. This was naturally going to happen because VAT is charged on excise uh, plus base price plus plus. Um, so do you think that there is more scope for states, number one, this question for Mr. Sharma, and number two, do you think there's more place or space for a further excise duty cut? Yes, definitely I feel there's a scope to, uh, to do more. Reason being, I'm sure that they are economists, they will uh, uh, vouch for it. The last couple of months, the government is having unprecedented, uh, you know, GST collections. So that compensates substantially that what loss uh, these companies, uh, sorry, the, so the sovereign government would be incurring by uh, uh, reducing the excise duties. And plus, mark my word, when these uh, excise duty were uh, increased last year or rather in the year 20, when this lockdowns happened, that down the, and the crude oil prices had crashed down to the 20s or less than 20 also. That time these uh, excise duties or uh, increase additional excise duty were uh, levied and it was said if the crude prices again go up beyond the level of 50, 60, so all these uh, uh, additional uh, excise duty would get reduced. It is getting reduced at the time, uh, of course, in the month of November last, some reductions were done. Yes. And now yes. they are getting reduced when the prices have crossed $110 for the crude oil. So this should have been done earlier. But I, I definitely feel there's a scope for more. How the fiscal deficit will be managed, how the government will take more borrowings. And these are unprecedented times. So I feel let it be answered by the two very eminent economists here yes. that what should be the right step in that direction. And, and how much more I scope there is. I will come to the eminent economist, but first let me come to Mayank. Thank you for your patience, Mayank. Um, I was keen to hear from you today from, uh, you know, to get a sense from the business point of view, uh, because I know that high fuel costs have been a pain for business as well. All input costs have been going up and driven up by high fuel costs. Do you see an immediate relief here and can you hope for or do you hope for more? Uh, as far as immediate relief is concerned, yes, definitely. Because uh, fuel, uh, you know, cost of fuel does not play a role just in uh, uh, terms of SEM, uh, supply chain uh, or logistics. 
but it even plays a significant role in terms of uh, input cost of other raw materials. So, for example, if you have a decentralized manufacturing facility and you have multiple manufacturing facilities, for example, you know, something like biscuits or bread or for that matter, bakery items are made out of uh, uh, wheat flour and uh, edible oil uh, and sugar. Now, sugar and wheat flour are typically sourced in South and in East from North and West. Now, if that is the case, you know, this commodities move from here to there and typically uh, at any given point in time, the prices of this commodities would be at least one or two rupees higher than that of North or West per kg. The reason being freight. Now, when, you know, the freight goes down, even the input cost, and it's not just the cost of moving the finished product, but even the input cost goes down. And there's a reason why we see, you know, uh, some cushion there, not only on the movement of finished product or logistics cost, but even in terms of, you know, uh, cost of other inputs, which typically are uh, sourced from, you know, uh, different zones or where there is an inter-zone movement. Hmm. So th that way, I think, you know, uh, uh, it provides a, a good question. Uh, in terms of expectations, uh, I think central uh, government or center has done a, uh, you know, a great job by probably reducing uh, uh, rupees 8 and rupees 6 in uh, excise. And they did that earlier in... Uh, November also by about 5 rupees and uh, 10 rupees in petrol and these are respectively. Uh, and as you rightly said, I mean, you know, see, uh, BAT is ad valorum. So uh, it's it's the price plus size on which the BAT is added. So I think whatever VAT reduction has happened has re happened because of the reduction in excise. And there is more that is expected from now state governments, at least those states where, you know, uh, the government is not... Uh, uh, of the ruling party, as in the central government, uh, 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 the party at the center. So uh, states like those now need to probably come forward and reduce uh, Why does the Why opposition VAT, states should cut VAT? Why shouldn't all states cut VAT? Uh, the ruling party states, uh, you know, central ruling party states have already done that. And I think, you know, of course there is scope there as well. But right. I think you know, there is more scope in states uh, or where it's hurting more is the states which are, which are not ruled by you know the center i will ask i will ask uh, upasna to come in on that do you think there is scope from the point of view of states do you see a distinction among states on who can cut more or who can cut less and can the center go further for the states i believe that some of the states do still have room to an extent the ones who really did not go ahead in the november series of cuts so there we may possibly see but when we talk about the room for cuts, you know, we will look at it from a fiscal headroom perspective. Yeah. And at this point, we have to look at states' finances. Uh, they do look difficult, especially given that on the GST side, the compensation uh, is ending by June 2022. And beyond that, they will be on their own. There is no really comp no compensation from the GST shortfall that could happen. And otherwise, also, there would be uh, shortfalls happening, although... Uh, there are certain components we may see upside, but the expenditure categories which are being budgeted as of now by the states, you know, we have about for 18 states, the collections, they seem to be budgeting a fairly high um, expenditure growth. So if they were to meet that expenditure growth, there is very limited room to really go ahead with uh, aggressive rate uh, VAT cuts, let me put it like that. Even for the center, at this point in time, there are direct taxes which have a reasonable upside because these were the buffers which were built in the beginning of the year. Clearly, we also have buffer coming from a higher nominal GDP growth, which will be providing more buoyancy in the ta tax collection side. But there are much more uh, shortfalls that are happening. One is happening because RBI dividend is lower than what was earlier budgeted. Um, we also have um, here uh, the fiscal uh, subsidies, rather, uh, the fertilizer and the food subsidy, which is likely to be huge. Uh, LPG subsidy, which has been provided for all of this, if we take together, the fiscal deficit is already looking uh, alarmingly high. It will be probably as high as last year, as against the 6.4%, uh, which was budgeted for the center. So we're looking at 6.8% um, fiscal deficit, which is an increase in absolute terms of 1.75 lakh crore. That's a huge amount. It really puts a lot of stress on the bond markets because they are already uh, heavily weighed down by supply concerns. So financing, like you initially correctly pointed out, is a very big challenge. Uh, we do not have uh, uh, FPIs buying at this juncture. We have, in fact, outflows happening. 
Uh, banks are already sitting with excess SLR, huge amounts. So we don't really have too many sources of uh, purchases for SLR uh, demand, uh, SLR bonds. And to that extent, I think it will become a challenge financing, especially because RBI too cannot step in materially in this uh, rate hiking or policy to tightness. Point, of course, uh, Madhvi, I want your view on uh, the center versus state controversy and whatever you want to add on that. But just the point about how further the Reserve Bank will now go with its interest rate hikes, which I expected. Um, the former CEA also commented on this earlier in the show during his interview, um, hoping that they aren't very steep hikes. Uh, do you think there will be some kind of tempering in the pace of interest rate hikes post this uh, cut? Yes. I. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the counter-cyclical fiscal responses to both consumption and in, uh, you know, inflation uh, essentially has been an ask from some MPC members. So this move definitely is, you know, coming as a relief to the Reserve Bank, especially because, you know, uh, uh, such move can actually tame household uh, inflation expectation much better than uh, you know, RBI rate hike per se, especially because, uh, you know, most households have a very high recency bias and uh, a bias towards, uh, you know, food and fuel inflation. So I think to that extent, uh, it sort of tames household expectation much better and does may ease off some pressure from the Reserve Bank in the medium term. But that said, as I mentioned, uh, you know, in the immediate run, inflation still runs uh, you know, pretty high uh, to the extent that it probably would print close 6.8% or even more in the immediate uh, uh, next uh, uh, print. And thus, I think to that extent, uh, there should be front loading in the Reserve Bank's uh, reaction function, at least in the next uh, three to six months or so. Uh, post that, I think once they reach the pre-COVID uh, uh, policy rate level or cl close to around 550, say, on the repo rate, I think uh, the bar for further tightening incrementally may become very high, uh, given that the fact that the sacrifice ratio or the uh, growth inflation trade-off uh, probably would become much more higher. So I think one needs to watch out for some major uh, policy move from the Reserve Bank. I'm not in the camp of a very aggressive rate hike. I think uh, RBI would trade very cautiously once uh, they, uh, you know, approach uh, close to 5.5 on uh, repo rate. Uh, largely because, you know, even pre-pandemic, the kind of growth that we had and at, at, at a particular rate, which was 5.15 on the repo rate, I don't think that we were actually, uh, you know, growing at a very uh, smooth pace. In fact, the growth at that point also was tepid and RBI was looking to be accommodative or wanting to be accommodative at that point in time as well. So I think um, uh, uh, at this point in time as well, even though we are seeing green shoots of, uh, of growth coming, uh, uh, I don't think that actually uh, there is much lever to the growth side. In fact, we are seeing much more headwinds from global front, which could actually weigh down on growth further. And to that extent, I think the policymakers might tread very cautiously uh, before following the path of the Western world as far as rate hikes are concerned. Yeah, something that Dr. Subramaniam also echoed earlier in the conversation. I'll have to wrap it here, but I want to thank all of you for joining us uh, in this fairly detailed and extensive conversation, trying to understand what exactly are the implications of this excise duty cuts that have been put into place and what impact they really will have. Uh